This one is the biggest. This is where the CIA gets involved. And we absolutely are sure other government agencies, according to John Kiriakou and according to John, um, who, am I, who am I thinking of? Not Pilger, um, uh, Ray McGovern, legend. He's absolutely convinced that, that, that these are um, CIA. So here's the last of it, and we're going to get through it, and then we're done. After weeks of Twitter files reports detailing close coordination between the FBI and Twitter, moderating social media content, the Bureau issued a statement Wednesday. We, we knew this. It didn't refute allegations. Mm -hmm. Instead, it decried conspiracy theorists publishing misinformation whose sole aim is to discredit the agency. They must think us unambitious for if our sole aim is to discredit the FBI. After all, a whole range of government agencies discredit themselves in the Twitter files. Why stop with one? That was like Carlin-esque. The, the files show the FBI acting as a doorman to a vast program of social media surveillance and censorship encompassing agencies across the federal government, from the State Department to the Pentagon to the CIA. The operation is far bigger than the reported 80 members of the FITF, which we talked about earlier, which also facilitates requests from a wide, ar wide array of smaller actors, from local cops to media to state governments. Twitter had so much contact with so many agencies that executives lost track. Is today the DOD and tomorrow the FBI? Is it the weekly call or the <laughs> monthly call? It was dizzying. Mm -hmm. right. The chief end result was that thousands of official quote-unquote reports flowed to Twitter from all over through the FITF and the FBI's San Francisco field office. We know about Elvis Chan. On June 29, 2020, he wrote a to a pair of Twitter execs asking if he could invite an OGA to an upcoming conference. OGA, or other government agency, organization, or other government agency. Damn. Right? Can be euphemism for CIA, according to multiple former in intel officials and contractors. Chuckles one. They think it's mysterious, but it's just conspicuous. Uh, Ray McGovern says, other government agency, the place where I worked for 27 years. Retired CIA officer Ray McGovern. It was an open secret. Ray that, McGovern. <laughs> yeah. Right. It was an open secret at Twitter that one of its executives was ex-CIA, which is why Chan referred to that executive's former employer. First Twitter executive abandoned any pretense to stealth and emailed that the employee used to work for CIA. So that's Elvis's question. CIA, mm. uh, I'm sorry, senior legal executive Stasia Cardiel, who keeps coming up, whose alertness stood out among Twitter leaders, replied, I know. And I thought my silence was understood. She then, she then passes on conference details to recently hired ex-FBI lawyer Jim Baker. But I invited mm -hmm. the FBI and CIA virtually, uh, and the CIA virtually will attend too, she says to Baker, adding pointedly, no need for you to like attend. Like they don't do that already. Right. No need for you to attend. I love that. The CIA virtually attend everything. Because huh? they're listening all the time. <laughs> the government. Yeah, they're like Jesus. Okay, number 16. <laughs> the government was in constant contact, not just with Twitter, but with virtually every major tech firm. These included Facebook. Microsoft, Verizon, Reddit, even Pinterest, Pinterest, and many others. Mm -hmm. Industry players also held regular meetings without government. One of the most common forums was a regular meeting of the multi-agency FITF, attended by spates of executives, FBI personnel, and nearly always one or two attendees marked OGA. Mysterious. Hmm. And there's one of the emails that's sent out to everybody uh, classifying them literally as OGA. Oh, I missed something there. Uh, the FITF meeting agenda is virtually always included at or near the beginning an OGA, brie OGA briefing, usually about foreign matters. Hold that thought. Despite its official remit being foreign influence, the FITF and San Francisco FBI office became conduit for mountains of domestic moderation requests from state governments, even local police. Many requests involved via, uh, were arrived via teleporter, like we talked about, a one-way platform in which many communications were timed to vanish. Especially as the election approached in 2020, the FITF FBI overwhelmed Twitter with requests, sending lists of hundreds of problems account problem accounts. We knew this. Email after email came from the San Francisco office heading into the election 
often adorned with an Excel attachment. There were so many government requests, Twitter employees had to improvise a system for prioritizing and triaging them. And the FBI mm -hmm. was clearly tailoring searches to Twitter's policies. FBI complaints were almost always depicted somewhere as possible terms of service violation, even in the subject line, which was weird. They, they show an, an email from Elvis Chan to Yoel Roth with it. Twitter executives even mm. noticed that the FBI appeared to be assigning personnel to look for Twitter violations. Like I said, Twitter cops. Quote, they have some folks in the Baltimore field office and at HQ that are just doing keyword searches for violations. This is probably the 10th request I've dealt with in the last five days, remarked Stasio. Uh, and, and she's saying this to Jim Baker. And of course he knew this. Even ex-FBI even ex lawyer Jim Baker agreed. Odd that they're searching for violations of our policies. Yeah, sure. Sure, it's odd. Uh, the New York FBI office even sent requests for the user IDs and handles of a long list of accounts named in a Daily Beast article. I think Max Blumenthal and some others, senior executives say they are supportive and completely comfortable doing so. It seemed to strike no one as strange that a foreign influence task force was forwarding thousands of mostly domestic reports along with DHS about the fringiest material. Foreign meddling had been the ostensible justification for expanded moderation since, since platforms like Twitter were dragged up to the hill by the Senate in 2017. Yet behind the scenes, Twitter execs struggled against government claims of foreign influence supposedly occurring on their platform and others. Yeah. Twitter files show execs under constant pressure to validate theories of foreign influence and unable to find evidence for key assertions. Basically, they're making up the crimes, which never happened. Twitter's saying they didn't find them, and they're like, no, you have to look for them, you have to find them. Found no links to Russia, says one analyst, but suggests he could brainstorm to find a stronger connection. And what he's talking about is, mm. after, I, after I reviewed the accounts, found no links to Russia, I asked blank so-and-so on this ticket, this was his answer. Thanks for tagging in the workflow. From my checks, I couldn't find any indicators to suggest that the account is Russian. Even the other phone-linked accounts doesn't have indicators to, su to suggest it's a Russian proxy. Did checks of, of via domain tools for IP resolves and email checks for OSINT. However, going by the content and narrative coming from the account is definitely pro-Russian or could and or could be a Russian proxy. I can brainstorm with so-and-so and see if we can dig even deeper and find a stronger connection. They're now inventing Russians. Extremely tenuous circumstantial evidence of being related, says another. No real matches using the info, says Yoel Roth in another case, noting some links were clearly Russian, but another was a house rental in South Carolina. In another case, Roth concludes a series of Venezuelan pro-Maduro accounts are unrelated to Russia's Internet Research Agency because they're too high volume. It's really weird. Like, they're trying to pin this on everybody that's anywhere remotely. Uh, look, it's Venezuelans who are connected to the Russians. It's always Russians. The Venezuelans were extremely high volume tweeter, uh, tweeters, pretty uncharacteristic of a lot of the other IRA activity, which is what Roth I said had identified. In a key email, news that the State Department was making a wobbly public assertion of Russian influence led an exec, the same one with the OGA pass, to make a damning admission. Quote, due to a lack of technical evidence on our end, I've generally left it be, waiting for more evidence, he says. Our window on that is closing, given that the government partners are becoming more aggressive on attribution. I'm going to go ahead with suspension and mark the domain as unsafe. That's what he says in the in the email here. Rebel Inside was a new one for me too. Not even sure what the goal of the account what could possibly be other than to highlight unrest in other areas of the world besides Russia. I've already suspended it because and marked its domain as unsafe. Like again, Twitter cops. Translation, more aggressive government partners had closed Twitter's window of independence. Other government agencies ended up sharing intelligence through the FBI and FITF 
not just with Twitter, but with Yahoo, Twitch, Cloudflare, LinkedIn, even Wikimedia. Yes, Wikipedia, which we know has been editing the Gray Zones page and other lefty and anti-imperialist pages. And they're in bed with the intel state. Former CIA agent and whistleblower John Kiriakou believes he recognizes the formatting of these reports. He says, it looks right on to me, noting that what was cut off above the tear line was originating the originating CIA office and all the copied offices. Many people wonder if internet platforms receive direction from intel agencies about moderation, and policy, foreign policy news stories. It appears Twitter did, in some cases, by way of the FITF and FBI. These reports are far more factually controversial than their domestic counterparts. And this one I know Max Blumenthal even shared. One Intel report lists accounts tied to Ukraine neo-Nazi propaganda, except it's not propaganda, it's real. This includes assertions that Joe Biden helped orchestrate a coup in 2014, no Victoria Newland did, and put his son on the board of Burisma. Somebody put him on the board of Burisma, unqualified. Another report asserts... Just hold list, on. One what? to list accounts tied to Ukraine neo-Nazi propaganda. Okay, so yeah, they the Maidan coup, they fucking... Got right. To. Okay. Right, they're denying that Maidan happened. They're mm-hmm. denying any of it. And they're, they're saying that Biden had nothing to do with it. And that just the opposite. He was trying to prevent that, which we know. You know, he had a, had a hunter get the gig. Another report asserts a list of accounts accusing the Biden administration of corruption in vaccine distribution are, again, part of a, of course, Russian influence campaign. They're constantly priming all these intel agencies to be anti-Russian. How about the fact that they're spying on behalf of the U.S. government on every other foreign government in the world? Nobody's even mentioning that. Like, this just became, like, Twitter is a global company, but yet they are basically a tool of the U.S. intel community. Often intelligence came in the form of brief reports, followed by long lists of accounts simply deemed to be pro-Maduro, pro-Cuba, pro-Russia, etc. This one batch had over a thousand accounts marked for digital execution. I'm sure some of our friends were in there. Because the uh, tragedy of Donbass, Donbass donbass.tragedy.info, a website documenting the purported human rights abuses committed by Ukrainians since 2014 is directed by GRU, Russian Intel. Oh, that wasn't really happening. Mm. Okay. Intel about the shady... Go back. Yeah, go ahead. Go back. Um, I'm trying to remember. What what was it called? Go back one more. Um... I must have missed it. Um, they, they, you said a thing. Talking about no, this? one more. Go the other way. The other way. Um, Documenting purported. Yeah, again, this is this is the the website. Tragedy of Donbass. Donbass tra- tragedy. Tragedy. Info. The tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise. That's that's what caught my. What was it? So the tragedy of the dawn bad. Often Intel reports are just long lists of newspapers, tweets, or YouTube videos guilty of anti-Ukraine narratives. That's definitely us. Definitely Gray Zone. Definitely mm. everybody in the indie media awards. Sometimes, and not only, Twitter and YouTube block the accounts, but now we know for sure what Roth meant by the Bureau and by extension the IC. He wasn't just dealing with the Bureau. The line between misinformation and what distorting was the propaganda is thin. Again? The what? I forget. The BAM? B-A-M? Uh, I think not... a minute ago. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but the line between misinformation and distorting pro- propaganda, this is it, is thin. Are we comfortable with so many companies receiving so many reports from a more aggressive government and other government agencies, by the way? The CIA has yet to comment on the nature mm-hmm. of its relationship to tech companies like Twitter. Nor will it ever. Twitter had no input into anything I did or wrote. Searches were carried out by third parties, so what I saw could be limited. Same thing, Matt, Matt Taibbi. All right, I'm exhausted. I'm done talking, but I wanted to show this. Under the first, and this was published uh, the other gotcha. night. Never mind. Yeah, Un- 
Under the First Amendment, government cannot work with tech companies to censor people for expressing disfavored viewpoints. It's important to correct the common misconception that has been percolating, as has become apparent to her. Jen and Yoon's, who's le lefty lockdowns won, through a, through a number of conversations. First of all, government coercing and pressuring private companies to engage in viewpoint discriminatory censorship is obviously First Amendment violative. The government cannot threaten private entities so as to accomplish what it can't directly. The tech companies are operating under duress is obvious, given public statements from officials such as Jen Psaki, Vivek Murthy, and Biden himself. They're killing people. We will hold them accountable. Given the power imbalance, these threats are inherently coercive. We also know the companies operated under pressure from internal Twitter emails, such as those exposed by Alex Berenson's lawsuit and exchanges between Murthy and Facebook executives. Um, claim that companies want to help government falls flat in these circumstances. However, assuming for the sake of argument that it's consensual, it's still unlawful under the First Amendment. The government cannot outsource what would be unconstitutional conduct to non-government actors. That should be obvious, but appears to be so too disturbingly few. The government cannot hire a private company to search your home without probable cause and a warrant. Likewise, government shouldn't be able to pay, persuade, or collude with private companies to engage in conduct that is a First Amendment violation when performed by the government. All right. And before we sign off, 